AL Joe Randazza here to talk about migrating from a self-managed instance to GitLab.com. To understand the customer scenario, they may consider migrating from a self-managed instance to GitLab.com because A, they're tired of maintaining the resources to host GitLab, or B, they'd like to receive automatic rollouts of features on the 22nd of the month without manually updating their self-managed instance. Before diving deep into the migration workflow, let's get to know GitLab.com a bit more. Um, first point to make is the entry point for the organization will be at the parent group level. This is also called the namespace. There are also differences um, between the admin settings where coming from a self-managed environment, you have a lot more control. Where here it's uh, not as much. Um, you're gonna see your CI minute usage, user management, auditing, and billing. Second point to make here is uh, there's not 100% feature parity between self-managed and GitLab.com. Uh, the important point here is SAML SSO and SCIM to user provision and deprovision. Um, this is at the silver tier. Uh, in addition to that, LDAP is not available as of 13.0 for GitLab.com. Uh, third point as well is taking advantage of GitLab.com runners with CI minutes. Uh, you get a set of free minutes, uh, which is different on each tier, or you can go ahead and purchase minutes. Uh, in addition to that, you can go ahead and still register your self-managed runners at the group or project level. So I created a six-step uh, high-level process of what a migration workflow may look like. Um, going into step one, you're going to need to set up users on GitLab.com first. This will help in order to preserve memberships during the group import. These users should exist on GitLab.com first. To do this, you can either manually add the users or take the recommended approach of uh, using SSO and SCIM with the support of Azure and Okta to do that. In the second step of this process, go ahead and export the group from a self-managed instance. This can be done through an API or through the UI export, which is experimental as a 13.0. Uh, important to note here, depending on the complexity of that export, uh, this is a background job, so the time to vary uh, may be different. Um, and as of 13.0, the version history is limited to two minor releases. So if you are exporting from a self-managed instance and you're importing into gitlab.com, uh, the import version to gitlab.com will need to be uh, 13.0, 12.10, or 12.9, and that'll vary as uh, each version increases. And the third step is importing the group at, or to gitlab.com. Uh, you can do that through the API. Um, a few important notes are the rate limits on the import API. Uh, another point is the parameter of parent ID. If you don't include this, it'll default to your user namespace. So you want to pay attention to that. And then also internal visibility does not exist on GitLab.com. So imported groups will default to private if not specified. So once the groups are all exported and imported into GitLab.com, Go ahead and export the project from a self-managed environment. This can be done either the API or UI. And again, when you export, the version history does apply as of 13.0. And then importing the project to GitLab.com can be done either the API or UI. Um, again, rate limits do apply and internal visibility needs to be considered on GitLab.com. Now, once all the projects and groups are imported into GitLab.com, go ahead and consider um, other data objects that weren't included, such as your CI CD variables, package registries, webhooks, and any other items listed in these next slides. So common questions we may get from customers, what's all included in the group export? Um, as of 13.0, this is milestones, labels, boards and boards lists, badges, subgroups, epics, and events. What's not included? projects, runner tokens, and SAML discovery tokens. And then what's all included in the project export as of 13.0? This will be project and wiki repositories, project uploads, configuration, issues with comments, merge requests with diffs and comments, uh, project entities including labels, milestones, snippets, time tracking, uh, in addition to design management and files and data, LFS objects, issue boards, and pipeline history. What's not included in the project export? build traces and artifacts, container registries and images, CI variables, and so on. Uh, the items listed here on the right, you can go ahead and take advantage of the APIs to fill in the blanks that were not included in the export. I uh, listed a couple of helpful resources here. Uh, the first one here, um, if the 
you have a high complexity of groups, projects, user management, uh, consider using professional services. We'll help you with success um, in setting up your gitlab.com group. Um, I've also listed here the GitLab API. This will have all the references, parameters, um, if you are looking to create a migration script. Um, and also the Python GitLab library. This is a community supported. Uh, this is a Python wrapper of GitLab API, which may help your migration process.